All right, guys. So uh, this week we are going to be talking about volume. Um, so this is part two of our 3D shape unit. Um, last week we talked about surface area, which was the amount of space surrounding something. Volume is going to be the amount of space inside something. Um, so we are talking about um, cubic units, like cubic feet, cubic yards, that kind of stuff. We're going to start off by listing the uh, different formulas that you'll be using uh, for your assignment this week, kind of like what we started with last week with the different formulas for surface area. Um, there, are not, there aren't two types of uh, volume. Like last week, we had lateral surface area and total surface area. This week, we just have volume. No lateral volume. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so I'll make a little table guy here. Um, so our first shape will be the prism. To find the volume of a prism, what your formula will be is V equals capital B H. V will stand for volume. Capital B still stands for area of the base like you saw last week. H still sounds, stands for the height. Um, next up is the cylinder. Cylinder also has the same formula, big B H, but just remember that that big B is pi r squared. <clears throat> Since the base of a cylinder is a circle, circle's formula is pi r squared. Um, next we have a pyramid. Pyramid is one third big B H. Big B still stands for area of the base. Remember that for prisms and cylinders, I'm sorry, prisms and pyramids, that big B can be a lot of different things. It depends on what shape your base is. Like if it's a triangle, you gotta do one half base on side. If it's a rectangle, you just do base on side. All that kind of stuff. Um, next we have a cone. A cone is also one third big B H, but for that one, just remember that big B is pi r squared again since the base of a cone is a circle. And then lastly, we have the sphere. How do you spell sphere? There we go. Uh, sphere's formula, definitely the weird one for today. Four thirds pi r cubed. Kind of crazy looking formula there. Um, four over three pi r cubed. Make sure that you do cubed, not squared. So let's dive into some examples here. Um, I tried to make some that are going to be very similar to the ones that you'll see on your assignment. Start off with the basic one here. Let's start off with, um, actually, you know, we're going to have six of them here. So let me go ahead and divide these up. Okay. Um, so what do we want to start with? Let's start with this guy. So this will be our shape here. I'm no artist, but I'll do my best here. Okay. So this is a cylinder. Right. And, um, let's throw down some numbers here so we can find the volume of this thing. Let's say that's 12 and the distance across there is going to be 10. Now, volume of a cylinder is big B H, where big B is pi r squared. So our r should just be half of that, right? They gave us the diameter. So we'll do pi times five squared, five times five squared, let's see what that is, I'll just use 3.14 times five squared is 78.5. Um, only other thing we had to find there was the H, which is 12. Now let me just make a quick reminder here that anytime you see big B, that means 
area of the base, right? Area of that whole shape on the bottom. That's why we had to do pi r squared, since that base is a circle of pi r squared. So back to the volume formula here, we'll do 78.5 times 12. Nine hundred and forty-two. Nine forty-two. Cool. All right, so cylinder, not too bad. Let's uh, jump over to this guy. So this will be a sphere. Mine looks more like an egg. Should be perfectly round. And let's say that this whole way across is 16. So volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. <coughs> now that r should just be 8. Right? They gave us the diameter. We want to make sure we use the radius. So 4 thirds pi times Eight cubed four thirds times three point one four times eight cubed is two thousand one hundred and forty three point six. All right, spheres are pretty easy. Okay, number three. Now this is gonna be my terrible drawing for today, but there's a problem very similar to this one um, on your assignment, so I wanted to make sure I did one like this. What I'm going to attempt to draw is a pentagonal prism. So there's a prism with pentagon bases. All right, here we go. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Uh, hopefully we see that we've got a pentagon on top, a pentagon on bottom, parallel congruent bases. Okay, so let's label some sides here. Let's say that that side is six. Put the little markings on it so that we know that this is a regular pentagon. All the sides are the same. Um, let's say this is five, that segment right there. And then this is going to be the tricky part. Um, we're going to draw in the apothem. Right, the apothem has to make a right angle with one of the sides there. And I'll say that that is 4. Okay, now, since this is a prism, even if it's a wacky prism, like a pentagonal prism, all prisms use the formula big B H. But what changes is what we have to do to find that big B. Because remember, like the cylinder even had the same formula. But for that one, we had to do pi r squared since our base was a circle. This base is a pentagon. Right? When we see this, we're trying to find the area of the base. Now, we did this two weeks ago we found areas of regular polygons. And the formula for an area of a regular polygon was one half a p. Now remember the a in that formula stood for the apothem. So we know the apothem is four. B, p here stands for perimeter which we can find pretty easily since our perimeter would just be five things of six, right? Each side is six because it's a regular pentagon. Um, there's five of them, so 30. 
So the area of our base will be 1 half times 4 times 30. So that should be 60, because half of 4 is 2. 2 times 30 is 60. Our h, our height, is 5. So we will calculate that now. We'll just do uh, big B, which was 60. Area of the base was 60 after we did the 1 half AP. Um, and then our h is 5. 60 times 5 is 300. Cool. Um, let's do another prism, because I think prisms can be pretty tricky. Um, you guys actually saw this picture last week on your assignment. And you're going to see it again this week. I don't know why I'm trying to draw it this way. This is dangerous. Eee. Okay. That worked out pretty okay. So what we've got here is a triangular prism. Triangular prism. Triangular prisms can be kind of tricky, just because people often forget to do the triangle part of the triangular prism. Since it is a prism, it's going to use that same formula that we've seen three times now, V equals BH. What is going to change, of course, just like the last one, is what we do to find that capital B. Remember, capital B means area of the base, and this is a triangular prism, so to find the area of the base, we have to do the triangle formula, which is one-half base times height. Now, we haven't even labeled this thing yet. I skipped that part. I'm sorry. Let's label it like this. Oh, and let's also put a little right angle in there. Um, so, when we want to do one-half base times height, the base and the height of the triangle, remember we're just looking at the triangle here, just the base, the base and the height of the triangle are going to be the two sides that make the right angle. And so, on this one, it's a three and a four. So we'll do one-half times three times four, which is six, right? Three times four is twelve, half of twelve is six. Now the height of this thing will be the six. So we will do B times H, right? Six times four, which is 24. Oh, I'm crazy. Where did I get that four from? I'm sorry, the area of the base was 6, the height was 6, it should have been 6 times 6, what have I done? What have I done? I was testing you, I hope you caught it before I did. That's a lie, I just messed up. Okay, um, so, before we move on to what I consider to be the tricky ones. Um, I know we haven't seen a cone or a pyramid yet, but those are the ones that I made a little bit tricky. Um, before we move on, just remember, guys, every time you see that capital B, area of the base. If it's a circle, you do pi r squared. If it's a pentagon or any sort of weird regular polygon, you do one half AP. If it's a triangle, you do one half base times height. If it's just a rectangle, it's just base times height, right? Um, just change up what you do to find that area of the base depending on what shape the base is. And that's going to be true for a uh, pyramid as well. We'll see a pyramid here in a second. Okay, so tricky ones. Um, just like last week, I did throw on one that is a cone that we have to do a little trig on. Why? Because trigonometry is important. And when you guys get to pre-calculus, trigonometry is going to come back. And I don't want you guys to tell your pre-cal teacher that uh, Mr. Hawk never showed you trigonometry. So even though we're not physically together anymore, I still showed you trigonometry. 
All right, so here's our cone. Um, let's draw in this line down to the center of the base of the circle. Let's draw a radius out. And then we're going to say that that angle right there is 40 degrees. And let's say that um, this is, let's say this is 4. And we want to find the volume of the cone. Volume of a cone is one third big BH. Where once again, big B, area of the base. Now what shape is the base of a cone? It is a circle. So to find the area of the base, to find that big B, we're gonna have to do pi r squared. Problem, problem alert, is that we don't have the radius, right? We don't know what this thing is. So how do we find that? We're gonna find that by doing trig. Um, the height of a cone and the radius of a cone form a right angle. That's the height. That's the height. This is the radius. Now, last week I showed you what this thing was. That was the slant height. We're going to see the slant height later on, on our next problem. But slant height is not important right now. Uh, we have the height. We want the radius. So we need to do trig. Right? We start trig by drawing that arrow from the angle, and the side that we hit is the opposite side. Then we draw the arrow from the right angle. That side is the hypotenuse. Um, I got two H's here, that's a little, a little confusing. Let me do a lowercase h over here. Because it should be lowercase h. So that's the opposite, that's the hypotenuse. The last side is the adjacent. Now remember, sine is O and H, cosine A and H, tangent O and A. And in this case, we have the opposite side. We have the opposite side and we want the adjacent side, right? O and A. O and A go with tangent. So inside the parentheses always goes the angle. We said that angle was 40 degrees. Um, tangent is O over A. Our opposite side is the height that we're trying to find, and the adjacent side. Oh, I've gone completely insane, didn't I? That was a 4. That was a 4, not an H. I am so sorry. Oh, man, I just confused myself. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, the height was four, and then I misread it as an H. Can't even read my own handwriting. I'm so sorry, guys. So let me let me back it back up here. Right, we were given that the opposite side, that the height of this cone was four, and we need to find the radius, which is the adjacent side. So we have the opposite. We want the adjacent. Tangent is O over A. So this should be four over R. So I messed that up too. This is a mess. I'm so sorry. 4 over R. O over A. Right? The opposite side is 4. The adjacent side is what we're trying to find, the radius. So the um, thing that we're trying to find, the R is on the bottom. Right? Bottom with a trig function, you divide. So R will be 4 over tangent 40. 4 over tangent 40. Uh, 4.8. 4.8. Okay. So my radius is 4.8. Okay. So we solve for that. And now we should be kind of good to go. We just got to start punching things into this calculation. So the reason we did that was to find the radius so that we could find the area of the base. So pi times 4.8 squared is 
72.4. And then we can take that and plug that into the volume formula. One third times 72.4, which was the big B, times the height, which was four. One third times 72.4 times four, 96.5. And there we go. Okay, so I think guys, the one that you're gonna have to do trig on is gonna be almost identical to that one. Um, they're gonna give you the height. You need to do tangent to find the radius before you can plug stuff back into the formula there. Um, once again, apologies for my, my handwriting there that even confused myself. Okay, so last one, last one. Um, if you look at the list of shapes, we haven't done a pyramid yet. So let's do a pyramid. Um, and let's do a, uh, let's do a square pyramid. So that means our base here is going to be a square. Okay, so square pyramid. Now let's label some sides. Let's put some tens down. And I said we were saving the tricky ones for last because this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us this side. This is the slant height. And let's say that the slant height there is 13. We saw the slant height last week with surface area. Slant height was an important part of the formula for um, surface area. However, the volume formula doesn't use it. Volume formula for any pyramid is one third big B H, just like the cone one. But the base of a cone was a circle, so we had to do pi r squared. The base of this is a square, right? So that part's actually gonna be the easy part. We can find the area of the base of that square no problem because square you just do base times side or 10 times 10, which is 100. That's no problem. What's going to be the trickier part is to find the height because believe it or not, the height's not even in this picture. The height of a pyramid is that line that goes straight down to the center. Not the part that goes out slanted. This is the height. And we don't know what it is. But there's a cool thing you can do. If you draw in the apothem, to the point where the slant height intersects, you form a little right angle. So the apothem, the height, and the slant height form a right triangle. So what can we do with that? Well, the apothem of a square is just half the side length. So that's just going to be 5. And this little right triangle now, we have two sides of it, and we want to find the third one. So what we can say is 5 squared plus h squared equals 13 squared. The slant height is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and I'm just doing the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 5 squared plus the height squared equals 13 squared. So what's that going to be? 25 plus h squared equals 169. If we subtract the 25, get 144. Square root of both sides gives us 12. 
and now we've got everything we need. So let's plug it in. One third times the area of the base, which was 100 from the square, times the height, which is 12. Um, a third of 12 is 4 times 100 is 400. And there we go. So I think those um, should do a great job of preparing you for the types of problems that you're going to see on your assignment. Practically the same drawings, just different numbers and everything. Um, there might be one or two on there that I didn't uh, do a practical um, replica of, but you are prepared nonetheless. Of course, if you have any questions, just email me, and I'd love to see you guys, if you have any concerns, um, at one of the live sessions, either Monday or Wednesday at 9.45. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Goodbye.